We use our senses like a hammer. Now, it can be used many different ways, but this is the way in which we go about using our senses. It's kind of crude. Hammer is very important, by the way. We're not disparaging the fact that we need a hammer on the site. We need it. It's certainly a useful and necessary way to use our senses. But what does this mean? It's kind of crude. This is what we do as human beings. We walk around, we have experiences through our senses, and what do we use them for? We say, I like that. I don't like that. Bam! That was good. That, that was bad. Never want that to happen. Bam! And that's pretty much how we go around life. We're totally running around in what we would call, in the spiritual world, you would call that very dualistic thinking. It's either either or, good, bad, right, wrong, up, down. That's all it is. And you're running around, bam, 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 bam. And you're just chasing pleasure, pursuing pleasure, avoiding pain. So how else can we use our senses if we're not going to use it like a hammer? Well, I might say we could use it like a saw. If you need to cut a piece of wood, you could probably do it with a hammer, but it's going to be a flipping mess, right? So to use a saw is a much more refined tool at that point. So I use that because what we're going to do is we're going to cut through the surface of reality a little bit. The surface is that. See, the thing that's interesting about that too, by the way, when we run around with a hammer, bam, 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 good, bad, wrong, wrong, I love it, I love it, I hate it, you know. When we do that, if we don't pay attention because we think of ourselves as being so evolved because we have microphones on and we're streaming hopefully across the country. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> but we can do that kind of stuff. It's worked before. I don't know why it's not working. Um, we think of ourselves as so evolved. But if you pay attention, that primal thing that I'm talking about, pursuing pleasure, avoiding pain, and that's it, is very animalistic. It's not that evolved. We can use all this technology if that's all we're using it for. You know, I'm going to do it. I, say, I hate to say this, but... So my son was telling me about the Gucci Gang video or something, which this guy said Gucci Gang a million times. And I said, I don't, you know, I said, that kind of makes me sad. He's like, well, it's funny. It was stupid. It's, you know, it's just silly. He made a lot of money. You know, it's great. Good. This is what we use, <laughs> Right? This is what we use, this phenomenal thing that we have, these senses that can create things that can, we all of a sudden are using them to, now by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. I, you know, there's, that's fine. But the problem is there's far too much of that and far too little of something that's actually meaningful, right? I mean, something that actually could edify, could actually make us evolve, right? I mean, I don't think we're going to get far with the Gucci gang, you know, chant. I don't know, maybe it's a mantra that I don't know if I, I could be. But... <laughs> So that's an example, though, of how we use these, this incredible thing. So if we start to cut through the surface of reality, what will we find? This is where it gets heavy, because we're cutting through. We're talking about the surface. We kind of know. When we cut through the surface of reality, the first thing that we'll notice, if we really start paying attention, is that nothing lasts. Not a single thing. Not a single thing that you can find. Not with your senses. Nothing lasts. The mountains that look so permanent, and so we know, they're shifting, they're moving, they're wearing down. Nothing. Not a thought. Not an emotion. We'll get into that later, too. This is something that we find. If we start, by the way, this may be part of why we don't cut through too much, because you're like, God, Adrian, I came here to be inspired. This is depressing, <laughs> right? You just told me nothing's going to last. I mean, I thought I was going to get inspired here. Well, we got to keep cutting. But this is part of why we avoid this reality at all costs, really. It's part of the pursuing pleasure thing. We try to hide the fact that, you know, this is part, though, of why it doesn't. This is why, this is what Buddha said. This was the first noble truth that Buddha said. Life is suffering. Like, do, and people call Buddhism the depressing or the, the downtrodden or whatever they call it, uh, you know, religion because it's kind of a negative kind of take on life, right, right off the bat. It's also what Jesus was talking about when he said, don't build your treasures in heaven. Or I'm sorry, don't build your treasures. That's where you're supposed to. Don't build your treasures here on earth. Why? Because it rots. Because it wastes. 
build him in heaven? What's he talking about? Well, hopefully, as we keep cutting, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. The treasure. The treasure. So nothing lasts. This is part of what we were avoiding. As we find ourselves in that place, we start cutting through. There's a need to find something that lasts, something that's changeless. And I got good news. There is only one thing, though. This thing has been called many, many things. I have chosen to call it authentic personal power. Now, why? I'm going to address that really quick because I think it's useful. I mean, it's kind of like, well, what that, you know, why are you creating new names for the same old thing? Which is actually exactly what I'm doing. I'm confessing, right? Because sometimes it's really useful to breathe new life into something. Well, words are dangerous. If I say certain words, they trigger people, right? It doesn't matter what it is. I, it doesn't matter. I could say Buick, and some people hate them. You know, and oh, that's the best car that was ever made, you know. I mean, they come with connotation, they come with baggage, right? So to pick a word or words like authentic personal power is a way of breathing some, authentic personal power, what does that mean? Yes, now, now we're talking. I got you. You don't know what it means. We're searching. We're open. We're not blocked. Does that make some sense? We're not carrying all this baggage with this word. Then the next reason would be that I do feel that there is used to, each one of those words is picking, or is, is chosen you know, for a reason, and they help with some clarity. We're not gonna get into that. I did a talk on authentic personal power. I have a blog post about it, you know, the books about it a lot. You know, so like if you, look, if you wanna look into that more, feel free. But I'm not gonna go there right now. I just wanted to address why. Authentic personal power, as we're cutting through the surface of reality, first we run into nothing lasts. Impermanence is what Buddhism calls it. As we keep cutting, we realize if we're looking, if we're looking, there is something that never changes. That never changes, that's changeless. 